you know, year of the dragon. But what about the year of the Lord's favor? The year of the Lord's favor. For the spirit of the Lord is upon you because he's appointing you. So why don't you just put your hands to heaven and say, Father, I ask that this will be a year of your favor upon me. Father, we just pray that you will shift atmospheres that have been strangleholds. We thank you that you proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And we receive your favor. Even as we've come to the Lord's table and we receive forgiveness, we receive new life, we receive hope, we receive relationship with you. We thank you for the favor and the blessing of God upon our lives, upon our children and our children's children. We thank you that you leave legacies of blessing and we receive it in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. The Dream Center said amen. What about online in Puchong? I hope you're ready to preach with me. I'm one of these girls that I like you to preach with me. And so this morning we're going to read the scriptures and we're going to read from Psalm 92. And it will come on on the screen and I want you to read this with me this morning. Psalm 92, 1, 2, 3. It is good to praise the Lord and to make music to your name, O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. To the music of ten string lyre and the melody of the harp, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord. I sing for joy at what your hands have done. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. I hope you've come into the house of God with that joy. God, you have been good to me. Is there amen in the house? Father, we lift our voices and we say thank you. We thank you. You are good. And then the psalmist goes on and he says, let's read it. One, two, three. The righteous will flourish like a... They will grow like the cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in, in, they will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no wickedness in him. Amen. In the kingdom of God, there's no best before date. You are always ready to flourish, to grow. He is with you. And so this morning I want to speak about a flourishing legacy, that God actually does something in us and then he does something through us. We've heard at the communion table, Pastor Chris Cam said, you know, he must increase, I must decrease. But the incredible thing about God is he doesn't want us to disappear. He wants us to partner with him. And sometimes we think, oh, it's all about God, not about me. It's, that's not exactly true because God says, I want you. I want you to partner with me. I want you to be part of my kingdom. I want you to work with me. Isn't that true? Our agendas, our egos decrease, but not our involvement. He wants your heart. He wants your life. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, being, strength, everything you have is given for the purposes of God. And I believe at this time God says, come on, I've got a flourishing promise for you. So what does the promise of God's flourishing look like? What is that word that we've read again and again? The righteous will flourish. They will grow. They are planted. They will flourish in the courts of God. They will bear fruit. They will stay green. They will proclaim. There's a lot that God is saying, come on, you've got work to do. Amen. We've got work to do. 
This is not a passive time. This is an engaged time. And God says, yes, I want to increase my glory on you. I want to increase my presence on you. I want to increase my power upon you. Ready, steady, go. (laughs) And even as we step into a new year, God is calling you. So what does this word flourishing really mean? Well, Gordon and I live in Oxford, England. And of course, we have the Oxford Dictionary. It is better than the Cambridge one. No, we won't go there. (laughs) So Gordon and I have been married for 43 years. We have two children. My daughter will be 40 in April. My son is 37, and we have six grandchildren. So let's see how intelligent you are here. I have three Australian children, grandchildren, and three British grandchildren. So here we have Leila, Cooper, and Alani. They are the Australians, and I have Annabelle, Margot, and Jeremy, and they are the British grandkids. <laughs> it's not hard to guess. So we have six grandchildren. So according to the Oxford Dictionary, flourish means to grow, to thrive. You see, God doesn't want you just to make it. He wants you to thrive, not just survive. He wants you to prosper. You know, Chinese New Year, it's all about prosper. (laughs) But God says, I'm ahead of the game. I've already decided for you that you can prosper. And the prosperity of God is not only about your bank account. It's about the well-being of life. He wants you to prosper emotionally, intellectually, physically, and financially. Every area of your life, he wants you to be able to say, whoa, it is well with my soul. He wants you to develop, advance. You know, here, to flourish means even in your old age, there's still something more. Even in your old age, there's still that feeling of advancement. He wants you to increase. He wants you to multiply. And that is God's promise to you here at the Dream Center, whether you're listening online or where you're coming from. He says, I've got a plan for you, and it's an upgrade. It's a flourishing. But if you read the biblical definition of flourish, it's a little bit more advanced than the Oxford definition. Biblical flourishing doesn't only depend on what you look like, It depends on where you are. The biblical flourishing requires you to be connected and located in a right relationship and also in a right place to truly flourish. You see, we flourish in the house of the Lord. We flourish when we are planted. We flourish when we are connected. That's why gathering together is so important. We are made to be together. We need to be planted in soil. And I'm sure if you look behind me, you're well aware we're growing deeper into the ground. You, for 2024, already have this picture in front of you, grow deep. And I believe I didn't know this before I prepared this word, but when I walked in here and saw the imagery, I thought, God's got a message for you, Dream Center. God's got a message for you online. God's got a message for you here in Malaysia. Dig deep and grow well. Dig deep and grow well. Again, if you read that scripture in Psalm 92, it says, and you will be planted in the house of the Lord. You will grow like the cedars of Lebanon. You see, to flourish, we need to be planted and connected. And there was a very interesting survey made. When people from Britain went to California, they were impressed by the cedars, the redwood cedars that you see growing. I don't know how many of you have seen them. They are incredible. And so the botanist decided, we're going to take some of these cedars 
back home to the UK. And they planted them, especially up in Scotland. And they planted these huge cedars. But then the winds came and the storms came. And what they discovered is that these cedars blew over. For all their height and their strength, their root systems weren't good if they stood alone. So they were perplexed about this. They thought, what's happening to these cedars? Why don't they grow strong? And then they discovered that for cedars to grow, they needed to be planted in groups. And here in Psalm 92, it says, and they will grow like the cedars of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord, and they will flourish. They discovered that they needed to plant cedars together. And that actually the roots went deep and the roots interconnected. And it was the interconnection of the roots as well as the depth of the roots that helped the cedars in the time of a storm. Hello, are you listening to me? You see, it's not enough to just say, it's me and God. My roots are deep. I'm in splendid isolation. God's made us for community. He's made us for families. And he plants you in the house of the Lord as cedars. Let your root systems connect together. And actually, it's the interconnection of one another, plus the depth of connection in Christ that holds us when the winds blow. Hello? And so you might look at your life and think, I love this word of flourishing, but if I'm honest, Rachel, I don't feel my life is flourishing. It's an okay, but yes, how do I know that I'm flourishing, that I'm growing, expanding, prospering, increasing, multiply? If I look at my life at the moment, it's okay, but it's not amazing. I remember thinking this myself. 2023 was a challenging year for Gordon and I. But God promises us you will flourish in every season. Can I hear every? Come on online. We will flourish in? You will flourish in? Okay, so how many seasons do we have? Can, number one, we have springtime. Number two, we have summertime. Number three, we have Autumn, harvest time. Number four, we have winter time. Okay, so let's think about it. How do you know something is flourishing in springtime? What does springtime look like? Bright green, lots of leaves, all the buds are coming. What I love about springtime is that vibrant, bright green. There's a special green of springtime. How many of you say, yes, I know what you're talking about. Springtime, that beautiful green, flourishing. Summertime, what is summertime? Flowers. In England, it's the rose gardens. And it's always flowers with fragrance. I love the jasmine. You know, it's not only the flowers, it's the perfume. You sit out in the evening and you can smell. Isn't that true? Summertime is flowers and fragrance. Okay, autumn time, harvest time, what is that? Fruit. Yeah, we love that fruit, except one, durian. I could never cope with that. Lord, have mercy. Yeah, give me mango, give me dragon, give me pretty well any other fruit. But durian, God bless you. <laughs> Fruit. But then what about winter time? What does winter time look like? How do you flourish in winter time? Uh-uh. You can't see it. Do you agree with me? Winter time, we are living in winter time in England. It is cold, it is muddy, it is a mess. Just a few weeks ago, we had a storm, the trees came down, the roads were flooded. You can't see anything much. You just see cold, ice, and mess. What's flourishing in wintertime? The trees are bare. Everything is brown and sticks, no leaves, no fruit. 
No flowers. So what flourishes in wintertime? Shout it out. One, two, three. Roots. And if you're a good gardener, you will know in wintertime you take care of the roots so that in the next season you will have the fruit. And so you might be sitting here listening to me and saying, Rachel, I don't really feel my life is flourishing, but I've come with a word for you today that this is a time of investment, that even when you can't see the flourishing, like springtime, summertime, fruit time, don't be careless with your life. Because you see, God says you flourish in every season. And so even if it feels like it's a winter time, the devil might be saying to you, ah, look at your life, it's nothing. Look at your life, you're a failure. There's nothing growing. You don't smell nice. You don't look nice. There's no fruit. Nothing is happening in your life right now. You're a failure. So many people are suffering with mental health problems. They're feeling suicidal. What is the matter with me? I'm not producing anything. And you can listen to the devil's lie. But the word of God says you flourish in every season. And there is a flourishing in your life. But the problem is in wintertime, you can't see the flourishing. The flourishing is happening in the hidden place. Amen? The flourishing is happening in the hidden place. So God would say to you this morning, listening online, listening here in the Dream Center, God says to you, be very careful that you do not disregard yourself or treat your life with disdain because you cannot see the signs of flourishing on the outside. God says this flourishing is happening in the hidden place. He, God says to you, I'm examining the root structures of your life. I am walking with you to look at the very depths of your life choices. Psalm chapter one says, blessed is the man who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand with sinners in the company of mockers, whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on God both day and night. Verse three, can you read it with me? One, two, three. That person is like a, is like a, planted by the streams of water, who yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever, say it, and whatever they do prospers. Some translations put it, and they continue to bear fruit in every season of your life. And so often we believe the devil's lie that says, you're not flourishing on the moment because you can't see anything above ground. I want to say today, come on, break the lie. Come on, say with me in the house of God, I flourish in every season of my life. And I thank you, God. I will prosper. I will thrive. I will multiply. So how do we flourish in every season? I believe, as Pastor Chris mentioned, we had COVID 2020, woo, everything changed. And our society and our culture has become complex in the last couple of years. The whole way we work, our working patterns have changed. How many of you say your workplace has changed in the last three years? Give me a wave. Yeah, everyone. The way that we think has changed and the stress of constant change can be exhausting. We can feel the wind of COVID blue, the wind of financial stress blue, the wind of all the economic and global chaos has blown through our lives. But you have flourished. How, you say? We flourish when we hold fast to God, when everything is shaken. We flourish when we say, no, God is good. 
even when we can't see it. When we dig deep in our belief systems and say, he is the God of miracles. He is a faithful God. And we dig our root systems deeper into Christ, into that soil that may even feel cold and hard and difficult. But we stand and say, I know that I know that I know that I know my God is able. How many of you have been doing that? Come on, let's lift your hands and just say, yes, God, I thank you. You have helped me dig my roots. You have helped me dig down. Every time you've made that decision to believe God when the storm has blown, you have been flourishing. You see, we have been in a shaking season, but this has also been an incredible preparation season. As we dig deep, God is preparing our roots for the next season of fruits. I believe that God has been preparing your life for a great harvest. All around us, we can see the shifts, the changes, and most of them have not been comfortable, but they've been necessary. God, I'm leaning into you. God is bringing that new, simple, childlike trust. Daddy, I trust you. You are my good shepherd. God, lead me through this time of family grief. Lead me through this time of difficulty. Even as you come into the Chinese New Year, you go home for family and it's a family occasion. For some people, it's the pretty red and joy. For some, this year might be more difficult. Because actually, you've lost your parents. You've lost a loved one in your family. It's actually a reminder, a winter time of what you've lost rather than what you celebrate. And we enter these seasons and they can be sweet and sour. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So right in this time, God says, but even though it's winter time, you can flourish in the house of God. You can walk into that family place with a message of hope to those that feel hopeless or feel um, overwhelmed. You see, where our roots are and the depth of our roots in times of difficulty help us display Jesus. And I believe as you go home and in this season, God says, I am going to help you flourish Winds blow. And during this last season, many winds have blown and big trees have come down. How many of you have seen that? Here you can see a picture of a big tree coming down. That tree fell down outside my mother's house. She's 89 years old, lives in England. And fortunately, it fell sideways and not against the house. It's a huge tree. But if you look at the roots, they were very shallow. For such a huge tree, the roots had not gone deep. They'd gone sideways. And when the wind came, it fell. And you see, God wants you to go deep so that in times of difficulty, because your roots have gone deep, you don't fall, you stand. And you can be a place of security for other people. You see, God wants you to be able to see beyond what you can see. Hello? God wants you to see beyond what you can see. You might look around you and only see the reality of the difficulty. You know, Matthew 13, Jesus was talking with his disciples about the prophets and he was saying, look, you only are seeing in the natural level, but I want you to see in the natural level and also see in the spiritual level. I want you to see and be perceiving. I want you to hear and be understanding. I want you to be bilingual people who can talk the natural language and the spiritual language at the same time so that you don't believe a lie. Amen. So what are you seeing? And then Jesus said, but because this people's heart have got calloused and hardened, they don't see accurately. They can only see the negative. They can hardly hear with their ears. They can't hear the sound of God that says, I'm with you. I won't forsake you. I'll hold you. I'll help you. Dig deep. Believe in me. I'll hold you. 
They only hear the negativity and the hopelessness that's all around them. Today we took bread. And I always think it is amazing if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, the Apostle Paul starts with this phrase. And it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he took bread. I want you to think of context. You see, that was not Resurrection Sunday. Do, 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 do. Fantastic. It was on the night he was betrayed. That was in his winter time. It was in his toughest moment of life. He had lived with his disciples for three years, heart to heart. And right on that night, he was betrayed. But he didn't withdraw and think, oh, look what they've done to me. He stepped forward and he took bread and he shared it with you. I wonder what we're going to do, even with your families, over this Chinese year, as you break. Don't think about the betrayals, the difficulties, the things that have caused upset and trauma, but go in the opposite spirit. On the night he was betrayed, he gave. On the night in the winter season, he gave. Hello. Go in the opposite spirit because you are made to flourish. I love Job 14. If you read from Job, people go, oh no, that's a bad book. But all through Job are the signatures of the hope of God. God has got another story for you. Job 14 says, oh, there is hope for the tree. Even if it is cut down, oh, it flourishes again. New shoots come. Its roots are in the ground. You see, good roots always mean good shoots. He said there's roots in the ground. But when the scent of water, the Holy Spirit, the fragrance of God pulls on your life, it reverses all that feels like it was cut off and you flourish again. In Jesus' name. Amen. And so maybe you look at this season of your life and you think, it's been winter time. It's been hard. But God's got a word for you. I've got water that I can pour into that winter ground and it will flourish again. Amen. Are you going to pray with me online and in the house? Father, we just pray right now that every place where we feel our life has been cut off, every place where we feel our tree was cut down, we ask you, God, let it flourish again. We thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're going to pour upon us and life will grow. You see, where you are rooted, you will grow again. Okay? The life of Jesus was cut down. He was betrayed. He was crucified. But oh, Resurrection Sunday came. And God says to you that you might feel, my life was cut down. Things were stripped away. When I was 17, 18 years old, my dream had always been to be a medical doctor. I studied hard. My grades were always good. To be honest, I had never failed at any exam. So it was just expected I would, get, I would do medicine. I had a place at Cambridge University, Clare College, to do medicine. That was pretty high up there. Everything was on track. And then I failed. I failed my physics exam which was very strange because maths was like my second nature. The school objected, they remarked my exams, everything was done, they came back, failed. But I, I had got top grades in biology, double maths and chemistry. So I already really had enough grades. I'd done scholarship papers and got mark one in both my scholarships. So everyone was saying, you should get in, you should get in. No, Clare College, Cambridge said, she failed physics, no. And suddenly it was like the tree of my life was cut down. 
It was at that time when I was 17, 18, I met Gordon. He looked at me and he said, Rachel, you have failed, accept it, but you're not a failure. And suddenly the whole of my life changed. I am not a medical doctor today. I actually went on and I trained and specialized as a clinical biochemist and went to London University, married Gordon. We then went as missionaries to Africa. And today I preach the gospel. But I'm a clinical biochemist with a specialist subject of male sex hormones. So I don't know if that helps me. (laughs) But I remember when I got that letter back again and again saying, failed, failed. My tree felt like it was cut down. But God had a plan. And I look back at my life, I'm 63, going to be 64. Got a credible man that I'm married to. Two amazing children, six grandchildren. My life is flourishing. But at that point, it felt like everything was finished. Come on. God's got a plan for you. God can raise you up because he has a flourishing life for you. And if we will dig deep, even in the tough times, deep into Jesus, deep into one another and trust each other, I believe God can do more exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, think, or imagine. But when your tree's cut down, come on, cry out, God, I need some water on my life. Because I know there's another season to come. Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, and when the Lord brings you back. It doesn't say if the Lord brings you back. It says when he brings you back. Come on, God's going to bring you back. When he brings you back and he gives you a land with houses filled with good things, wells dug, vineyards growing, olive trees, you eat, you're satisfied. Just remember the winter time where you dug deep into God. Remember God. It says, be careful, don't forget God. Because... You may be in a winter season in some area of your life today, but I tell you, God's got a plan for you. God's going to flourish and help you grow. But remember, you dug deep into God and God blessed you. So as I close what I've shared with you today, I want you to make a statement over your life. Whether you're listening in line, whether you're here in the Dream Center or you're in other congregations, today I want you to know that God's promise is true. You are flourishing in the house of the Lord. And even if you can't see it above ground, God is doing something deep in your preparation. He's preparing you for days to come. And you will look back and say, how did you do this? And remember, It's because you made a choice to dig deep in your trust in God. You prepared your roots. And he will now allow you to fruit. But maybe you're listening to me today and you said, Rachel, if I'm really honest, I don't know if I can trust God anymore. But remember, on the day, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gave. And it's in these seasons when life doesn't make sense, when we feel overwhelmed, when it is tough, that we need to make big choices and give. And I want to challenge you, whether you're listening online or you're present in church, either here in the Dream Center or put John, you need to make a decision to be rooted in Jesus. Not casually visiting, but planted. You know, when you're a pot plant, you can have very limited growth. A pot plant can do something, but God doesn't like pot plants in church. He likes people planted in the garden of God. Get out of your pot plant. Get out of your restrictive commitment and understanding. Give all to Jesus. And so as we close this service, I want to ask you, Are you planted deeply in Jesus today? Have you let go of your life and put it into God? Because you'll only flourish if you get out of your pot plant and give all to Jesus. And so I'm going to pray for you. 
Maybe you gave your life to Jesus a long time ago, but if you're honest, today you're not really planted. You're spectating, not participating. And God says, I don't want just a visitation. I want a habitation. I want you to live with me. So I want to pray for you. I'm going to count one, two, three. And if you know today that in your life you are not really planted in the house of the Lord, but you're saying today, just like Pastor Chris said, I watched the communion and I had to think, am I really given to God? Well, now's your moment to say, here I am, God. 100% yours. And if you want to pray that prayer with me, whether you're praying online, praying in another church campus, or here in the Dream Center, when I say one, two, three, I want you to put your hand right up. And I'm going to ask the other people just to keep their heads bowed to give you some privacy. So one, two, three. If you're saying, yes, I need to be planted, put that hand right up. Thank you, thank you. I can see hands right Just put that hand up. Keep it right at the back there, right at the back there. God sees that. And now I want everyone in the churches, you keep your hand up. And I want you to use your imagination and take hold of the hand of God. Just imagine God's got his hand to you. Take hold. And now everyone in the house and even online where you are, pray this out loud. Jesus, today, I give you my life all that I am and I ask you help me live life well I am sorry for the wrong choices that I have made please forgive me I want to live my life for you Jesus 100% please come into my life forgive me for my sin and help me flourish every day of my life. And everyone said, Amen. Now I wonder if you would just stand with me and I want to read this final scripture as a prayer. I want you to say it with me. It's Psalm 52. I want you to read it over your life. I want you to make it your faith declaration as you go out. And as you stand, come on, be that amazing tree. Dig those roots down into the ground and say, God, I'm deeply rooted in you. I want to be a tree that flourishes for you. Are you ready? Have you had coffee this morning? Can you preach with me? One, two, three. But I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you in the presence of the faithful people. And I will, and I will, and I will hope in your name. For your name is, your name is, your name is good. And we thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give him a applause. Oh God, we thank you that you are good to us. And I want to just pray for you. Father, I pray for everyone going through winter time. Everyone who just feels, God, it is being tough. But today we stand in the house of God and we trust you. We give you our lives and we declare that you have made us to flourish. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God really bless you.